In this recording, I'll walk you through the assets application in Maximo Mobile. I'm logged into Maximo Mobile on my iPad, and I can see that I have a tile called Assets on my Navigator screen. I'm granted security access to the assets functionality, that's why I can see the tile. And if I tap on the tile, this looks like similar Maximo Mobile applications in that I can see a list of assets and that there's a drop down in the upper left called My Assets. If I tap on that drop down in the upper left, I can see several other options. My Assets is a saved query that can be modified to define criteria to download assets to your mobile device in the case that you work in a disconnected scenario and would like all of that asset information available. There's a new capability in Mobile 9.0 called Server Side Search. It is enabled on work orders out of the box, but we've enabled it in the assets application for this demo. Server Side Search actually allows you when you have connectivity to go and search and find assets that aren't downloaded to your mobile device. So in this case, I am walking around. There is an asset tag with a QR code on a pump. I would like to pull up that pump information to review some specifications, to review some documentation. And while I'm there, I notice that some of the data is not correct and I would like to update that. So what I do is, is the search bar is already open, but if the search bar wasn't open across the top, there is a touch point. It looks like a magnifying glass in the upper right. I tap that touch point, the search bar opens. To the right of the search bar, there is a touch point that opens the camera so I can scan a QR code or a barcode. So I open that. Um, I had an asset tag in front of me, the QR code scan, a search was automatically performed. In my case, two records were returned. And the reason for that is because that search field is a smart search field that can search more than just the asset number. You could actually enable additional fields to be searched. Um, in this case, that motor is attached to the pump. So the parent field on that motor is 11430. And so that record was found as well. In my case, I want to only look for the pump. Um, so I'm just going to, it's right there, pump 11430. I'm going to tap on that record. I'm now looking at the details of that pump. And just to walk you through what you see first, and then we'll walk through the actions that you can perform. Um, starting in the upper left, I can see the downtime status of the pump. It's up and operational. Um, I can see the status, the overall status of the pump is operating. You'll see that I can actually change the status as well, and I'll do that. Um, I see an image that you see in the upper right. That is the thumbnail image. That's not an attachment. Um, I can actually add that thumbnail image if it's not already there. So I'm, I'm out with my mobile device. I can snap a photo, and I can attach that particular image. Um, and now I see some nameplate. Uh, information about the pump, some asset level details, you know, the serial number, the manufacturer, um, you know, the pair of assets. And if I keep scrolling, I can see two additional touch points underneath manufacturer. Um, the first touch point that I see, if I tap, opens a sidebar. And these are meter readings. So I can review the last reading, the last reading date for the meters associated with this pump asset. Uh, the touch point next to that, that would actually grab my current location. It would store it on the service address of the pump. Um, that would be really helpful if your assets are distributed out in the field and you're trying to collect coordinate information. The next section is the attachments. I can see that there's actually one attachment already. We will drill into that section in just a minute and then we'll review the attachment and add a new one. And then at the bottom, I can see the attributes. This particular asset is classified as a centrifugal pump, and there's additional attributes or specifications, as we call them, that are associated with this asset since it's classified as a centrifugal pump. Not only can I review those specifications, but I can also modify them. Let's just start from the top and work through what we can do. Um, I see a pencil touch point in the upper right. I can tap that touch point and I'm now in edit mode for the main asset details. So let's uh, say that I see the serial number is incorrect. It's missing a letter at the end. So I can come in, I can modify, and I can correct that serial number. Um, you could, um, if there was no serial number as well, fill in that serial number. And notice the barcode is actually enabled there too. So perhaps the asset tag has the serial number um, in a QR code and I could fill that in. Some of these other fields have magnifying glasses next to them like type. If I'm populating that information I could click the magnifying glass and I could select from the valid list of values. 
um, scrolling down, let's actually update the location. So right now the location is BR430. I could just type in the new location or I can click the three dots and I can either scan or search. If I perform a search, um, what I can see is I would just type in something about the location I'm looking for. It could be the location number, maybe the description. Um, when I find the location, I'm going to select it. And now I'm actually going to perform an asset move. And this is going to follow the same logic that if you were to perform an asset move from Desktop Maximo, it logs the transaction. Um, it does the same exact thing as if you perform the move with a move modify action. Okay, I'm going to come up and click Save. I've now updated the serial number. I've performed an asset move. Um, the next thing that we'll do is delete that thumbnail image. So I'm going to click this trash can icon. Um, this was new in mobile 9.0 that we recently released. Now that icon is gone. So let's say I'm standing in front of the pump. I want to take a photo. Okay, so I've taken a photo with my mobile device. I've now attached that. Scrolling down, I can see the attachment section. So tapping on the attachment section, I can actually review the attachments. Okay, so there is a PDF manual. I can tap on that PDF manual and, and review the details. I can, you know, depending on the viewer on my mobile device, you know, navigate through, look at those details. Notice there's actually a plus in the upper right as well. So I can click that plus and I can choose a file. I can pick something from my photo library or again, I could take a photo. And when it's, I um, grab that attachment or take a photo, I can name it. This is a photo of the pump. So I just use talk to text to make that a little bit quicker. Okay, so now I've added an attachment. I get that nice blue bar telling me the attachment was added. I'm just going to click in the upper left to back back up to the asset details. Now what we'll do is progress the status. So, you know, perhaps this was in a not ready status or, um, you know, some kind of status where you needed to change it. Or maybe you're going to make it a decommissioned asset. So to do that, I can tap on the status. And when I tap on the status, I get a sidebar that opens and I can see the available statuses that I can choose from. So in this case, I'm going to progress this particular pump status to active. Click the blue button in the upper right to select that status. Same thing, I've now adhered to the change status flow in Maximo, so this is going to be captured as history. And the last thing that we'll look at are the specifications. Notice that I do have a pencil icon there as well. So not only can I review the current specifications, I could also come in, click the pencil icon. I get this sidebar that opens and I can modify the specifications. If it's a freeform field, then I can type anything. I can see that um, stage and total header freeform. If there's a valid list of values behind the specifications, I can actually come in and drill in and see the valid list of values and modify them. Okay, let's look at one more use case. This particular asset was a pump in a manufacturing facility, um, so the map wasn't as important to me. But let's say that I am out in the field and I actually do want to use the map. So I can do a couple things. Um, first of all, I can use that same search bar. I could do the same use case where if there is an asset tag attached, I could scan that particular um, asset tag, the QR code on it, and I could find the asset I'm looking for. Um, notice that there's a touch point on this T um, that wasn't on the pump. It wasn't um, available on the pump. This particular touch point brings you to the map. So what I can do is click that touch point. I'm brought to the map. And I can see right here there's this blue icon um, that's highlighted that says this is where this T is on the map. Now I can actually start doing pinch to zoom since I'm on a mobile device. And now I can actually interact with my map. Um, in the upper right, I have this overflow menu that I can click on, and I have all of these different map tools. So, for example, I can use my identify tool, and I can identify. Um, in this case, I identified some pipe, and then here's that T information, and this information is from Esri. So I do have the, the map tools. I'm not going to drill into this demo on the different map tools because I just want to show you the ease of the asset manager. Um, but I can see the current location where that asset is. 
Um, another use case for the map is if I'm just sitting here on this list screen and I want to toggle over to the map, um, I would actually be able to see multiple assets on the map and I would be able to use the map to select an asset record as well. Um, so you can use the map either to see where a current asset is or you can use the map, let's say I'm standing out in the field that shows where my current location is, I can see the asset on the map and I can click on it from the map and open that record as well. So this has been a demonstration of the assets application in Maximo Mobile. Um, you can also create new asset records. I did not drill into that use case, but if I wanted to create an asset application from my navigator, um, you can see up in the upper right, I have a plus icon, and that's where I could come through and I could author a new asset record. Um, so this is the end of the demonstration for Asset Manager. You know, let me know if you have any comments um, or any additional things that you would like to see. Just go ahead and, and drop those in the comments on the video.